So as I said in earlier videos, or I said in class anyway, that uh, Aristotle's ethics is going to rely heavily upon his metaphysics. He thinks uh, you know, the answer to, you know, no, sorry, what ethics is trying to do is trying to answer the question, how are you to live your life? And you know, your answers are going to have certain metaphysical presupp presuppositions. Uh, for Aristotle, uh, how you are to live your life is going to be, answering that question is going to be heavily influenced by the question of what is, or what does it mean to exist. So everything we talked about when we're dealing with substance, trying to, uh, trying to deal with that, you know, even deal with the four causes, trying to explain change, that's going to have a lot to do with answering the question, how are you to live your life? One thing that Aristotle is going to talk about real quick and what's really important in this idea is the idea of an end, okay? Uh, and, you know, the end is basically the goal or the purpose of a thing. So, uh, lots of things have what are called instrumental ends, right? And these are ends that are good for something else, okay? So, for instance, you know, my smartphone. Uh, my phone is instrumental has lots of instrumental ends for it right i can talk on this phone uh i can receive email on this phone i can uh know where i am, can locate myself on a map with this phone so this phone has lots of instrumental ends it's good for many other things okay um lots of things are like this um you know my keys right my keys are good for opening up my car door what my keys are not good for is, say, fertilizer for these trees. It makes really bad fertilizer for these trees. So does my phone. My phone makes really bad fertilizer for these trees. However, if I wanted to take a picture of these trees, my phone would be good for taking pictures of these trees. This is the idea behind having an end, is, is what is it good for? Right? And an instrumental end is that it's good for something else. So we have things that are good for something else. This is that you know has an instrumental end. Right? Well, now ask yourself: Can there always? I mean, there's always going to be an instrumental end. Is it always going to be the case that if something is good, then it's always good for something else? Right? Well, well, think about that. Uh, you know, I have my smartphone, and it's good for, for instance, communication, uh, either by talking, or by uh, texting, or by email. So it's good for something else. And we say, okay, well, is communication good for something else? It's like, yeah, you know, communication is good for something else. You know, uh, we get to express propositions, right? So we get to communicate information. Uh, we also get to communicate, for instance, emotions. Let, let each other know how we're feeling. This helps build relationships. It's like, okay, uh, is, you know, communicating information, is that good for something else? And I say, well, yeah, communication is good for further, you know, communication of, of uh, information is good for understanding the world and being able to compare ideas. Okay. So keep pushing it. Is it always just good for something else? Is that always just good for something else? Well, it looks like really quickly that if something is always just good for something else, then the question is whether there's anything good to begin with. Okay. If it's only ever just good for something else, why is all of this good anyway? It looks like when we're dealing with ends, that there's going to be good, that there's going to be something good that's good for its own sake. Right? So when you ask the question, well, what is this good for? The reply is, well, it's good for this. And this is what's called an intrinsic end. It's good for its own sake. So for instance, you know, we're talking about communication. We tend to, tend to think of knowledge as something that's good for its own sake. Well, what is knowledge good for? Well, it's good because it's knowledge. Right? Um, happiness. Well, what is happiness good for? Well, it's good because it's happiness. Pleasure. What is pleasure good for? Well, it's good because it's pleasure. Right? You keep asking, well, what is it, you know, is it just always, is it good for something else? It looks like there's nothing that's ever going to be good to begin with. So we have this distinction between two kinds of ends. We have instrumental ends and we have intrinsic ends. And instrumental ends are ends that are good for the sake of something else. And intrinsic ends are good for its own sake. So this brings us uh, to kind of the point of ethics, right? 
the, uh, the question that ethics is trying to answer is how are you to live your life? Uh, and the answer that it comes up really common, uh, not across philosophers, but across a variety of different views in time and, and, and uh, sorry, in, across history and, and across uh, place, is happiness. Right? We are seeking happiness. This is the thing that matters. So happiness, whatever it is, is an intrinsic end. Right? Um, happiness is what, you know, what is it good for? Well, it's good for happiness. It's just something that you. It's just something that you want for its own sake. Uh, so the question then is, what is this intrinsic end that is happiness? Um, you know, several different views have been offered uh, as trying to account for what happiness is. So it's, 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 you know, it's not exactly a settled question. But the, uh, but the idea is that, well, whatever happiness is, it's an intrinsic end. So the question that we have now is, well, how do we find this intrinsic end? So the question is, how are we going to find this end, this intrinsic end uh, for us that is happiness? Uh, well, to start answering this question, we have to first start answering, well, what are we? <laughs> um, so Aristotle, kind of following Plato here, thinks that there's three parts to what a person is. All right? There's three parts to what a person is. And I notice this means you know, answering the question, what is our form? Right? If we're asking, what are we? What kind of thing are we? We're asking, what is our form? So we already got the formal cause loaded in. Right. Well, uh, for us, Aristotle says, we've got uh, a rational part, that's our mind, and we've got irrational parts. All right. Now, irrational here does not mean something like, you know, just completely contrary to reason. That's, that's not exactly what is meant by irrational. It, more along the lines of, is like, there, there's a part of us that doesn't use reason at all. Not that it's contrary to reason, it just doesn't use reason at all. And that there's two irrational parts to us. Uh, one is, he, you know, he, he looks at it as or what's called the veg vegetative part. Right? So this doesn't mean we're vegetables. <laughs> now again, uh, Aristotle's a pretty natural born biologist, so he starts with looking at how things are in common and then how they're different. And there's something that I have in common with all of these things, all right? All these trees, plant life. And that is that we, uh, we grow, we take in nutrition, and we live. Right? We grow, we take in nutrition, and we live. That's the vegetative part of the soul. Just the basic, you know, the basic uh, survival functions of what you are. Right? Um, now, vegetables are a lot different from other kinds of things on the planet. Right? Um, and this is, you know, something that we have in common with animals that plants don't have in common with, with, with animals. And this is called the appetitive part. And that should sound kind of familiar at this point, you know, thinking about Plato. And the appetitive part just wants things. Right? Um, it, wants, it wants things and it hates things. Okay. Uh, so, you know, good tasting food. Well, it wants that. Uh, it hates bad tasting food. Um, it wants food. It wants... Um, to love, it wants to uh, um, you know to possess, right? It wants a whole lot of things. Now the the problem with the appetitive part, and this is what we share with the animals, is that it wants all these things, but it it, it doesn't have any real way to discern between them. It just kind of wants and, and grabs and gets at it. So this isn't exactly a, you know irrational at this point. It's more like just non-rational. The appetitive part just wants things. So that's the irrational part of us. The rational part of us, reason, right? that's the part that starts figuring out which things to want, or not, not sorry, it doesn't figure out which things to want, it figures out which of these wants to go after. Right? It figures out which of these th wants to go after. So that's going to require knowledge of the world, what it's like. It's going to require understanding the four causes of everything, what kind of thing it is, what's it made of, where it came from, and when we're dealing with ethics, what its purpose is, what its end is, what its final cause is, what is it supposed to be, or what is it, you know, what is its being that would be most fulfilled. So we need reason, we need the rational part of this to find this final cause. So in answering the question, what is our happiness, right, we have to answer the question, what is our final cause?